Have you ever woke up in the morning with this great concept idea in your head and tried to bring it to life using AI only to find out that the AI didn't understand the concept? This happened to me when I attempted to create a centaur, a creature with the head, arms, and torso of a man and the body and legs of a, of a horse. Instead, I ended up with a lot of man-on-horse generation. However, by modifying the image in Photoshop, you can guide the AI to create pretty much anything you want. Uh, in this video, I will show you my approach. From the images generated, I pick one that has fewer mistakes and open it in Photoshop. Then I remove the things I don't want in the scene, like the horns that are too big, using the Remove tool. Next, I start to think about how I can create this half-man, half-horse creature. Obviously, I don't need the head of the horse, so I'll remove that. It doesn't have to be perfect since I'll put the man on top. Then, I don't need the human foot in the image, so I'll take that out as well. Uh, I'll take the man's body and put it on a separate layer. You can use Control plus J to create a new layer via copy. Then move the body into position where it should start from the horse part. I want it to be a little bigger. In the end, the body is probably too big, but I'll go with it for now. I want it to be impressive. <laughs> I hide the layer with the body, and now I need to remove that part from the horse, leaving only the horse part behind. I can use Content Aware Fill for that, or paint over it. I'll play around with the remove tool or any tool that does the job for me. If it still doesn't work how I want it, I'll take a brush and paint the area with similar colors. Remember, this is just to guide the AI. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the better I represent the idea, the better it will understand what I want. As I move the upper body part into position, I check what else I can quickly fix. Maybe I can add that part on the horse's back. There shouldn't be clothes there, so I'll paint it brown. It's missing a hand, so I'll fix that in a moment. Then it looks like it has some kind of weapon in the hand, so I'll create the missing part to make it look like a staff. Um, when I try to guide the AI, I just think more in terms of color, shadows, and light. I don't focus on texture. Instead, I look at it, squinting my eyes. Something similar will happen when the noise is applied on top of it, and it tries to guess the shape. That's why I usually add just two colors, one for light and one for shadow, and it can do a pretty good job of guessing. I selected the hand and moved a copy of it to a new layer. Then I flipped it over so I have something in place for the missing hand. Um, you can cut the hand into different pieces so you can get it in three parts, allowing you to move and bend it as you want. But for this, I will just resize it a little and move it into position. I try to remove um, hard edges so it blends better. I notice that sometimes when there are hard edges, the AI tries to put something in there. So unless you want something there, blend it a little. I try to add contrast between the background and subject so the AI can see it better. So I am creating those hard edges that I didn't want in the shoulder part, but I want them here. A good tool to pose the subject is the puppet warp tool. But for a quick job, the Liquify tool lets you move things around easily. Now you can save it as a JPG or PNG file. And let's move to Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111. Ah, uh, I, I forgot to tell you something. You can paint over with a brush or add photos in so you have more extra things. For example, I can quickly hint that I want some orange plants here. They can be leaves or flowers. If you want to be specific, you can mention those later in the prompt or paint them more accurately. But in this case, I'll just do some quick shapes. Now in Stable Diffusion, go to Image to Image. Here, we describe what we want to see in our generation. I added a staff there, so I mentioned it in the prompt. Upload the image you just saved, then you need to specify the size here. You'll want a similar ratio to your image. I used a 16 to 9 ratio in this case. For size, see what your video card can handle. You can go with 1024 or 1200. Um, but in my case, I can go up to 1920 pixels. Now it's time to play with the denoise strength. Start with a low value like 0.30 and see if it keeps the centaur body. This is not bad. Let's increase the denoise to 
The higher you go with it, the more details you can get, and the more variation compared to the original, but also more mistakes can appear. I will generate a few times until I get something I can work with. This one looks pretty cool. I kind of like it. Now I want a bigger image of it, so I will upscale it. Under the image, you have that triangle icon that you can press to send the image to extras. Once you are there, you can choose your favorite upscaler. I will choose 4x ultra sharp for now. For resize, I think 2x is okay. Um, in my case, hit generate and wait for your upscaled version. Open the image in Photoshop, and as you can see, it's a high quality image around 3840 pixels. You can use the remove tool to erase tiny mistakes or things that you don't want in your images. Some generations have small mistakes that can be fixed in Photoshop, while others have more complex mistakes that are not so easy to fix. Here, on the chest, this thing doesn't make sense, so I will try to uh, remove it. However, this part I will regenerate in a moment, so it doesn't need to be perfect, but if I leave it there, it will appear in the next generation, which I don't want. Now, the chest looks too blank, so I will add a little dot to make it more anatomically correct. I'll continue by removing things in the air that distract attention. Now with the marquee rectangle tool, make a square selection. Since it's easier to work with, hold down shift to ensure it's perfectly square and try to make the selection maximum 1200 pixels or the highest value you can generate with stable diffusion. I want a better body and face, so I am only selecting that part. Next, copy the selection and create a new document where you paste it. The size of the image is 1079 pixels in this case, so you might want to remember that. If you have a powerful computer, you don't need to close Photoshop while you generate with AI, but if you close it, then the exported size is important. Save it as a JPG or PNG image. Import it into image to image in stable diffusion. The ratio is square, and for the size, you go with the maximum that gets a good result. In my case, 1024 pixels or 1200 pixels give me a good result. Use a low value for denoise strength, like 0.27 perhaps. As you can see, the quality is way better now. Um, you don't want it to be too different, so it blends better with the original, but you want to keep the shapes clearer and more correct. Generate a few versions until you get one that looks good to you. Now, place the new generation on top of the older original square image. If you didn't have Photoshop or you don't have the older image, you just resize the new generation to the size you had. That's why I said to remember the image size, which was 1079 in my case. Since I left my Photoshop open, I just dragged the new generation on top of the older one. I create a mask and fill it with black so it hides everything. Then, with a soft white brush, I bring back the new generation details. I stay away from the corners of the image and only bring in the middle part so it blends perfectly with the rest of the image. As you can see, the new generation has a lot of details and is of much better quality. You can see the small elements better with fewer mistakes. Once you're finished, flatten the image so you have only one image. Pick the Move tool and drag the result onto the original full image. Since I already have the selection there, I can place the image inside that. If I hold Shift when I drag the image on top of the older one, it will align perfectly. As you can see now, we have a lot of details on what is important in the subject, plus a better quality face. If you didn't have Photoshop open, you wouldn't have the selection in place, so you'd have to adjust manually. You can uh, reduce the opacity and try to match the older image. Usually if you match the eyes and body contour, you can quickly find where it should be. It's important to be the same size. That's why I remembered that it was 1079 pixels. You can zoom in and see if you can find more imperfections that you can fix with the remove tool. In this corner, I don't like the plants because they seem to have low quality and lack enough details. So I will repeat the steps for this part making a square selection and saving that image as a new image. Then I will use that in Stable Diffusion to get better quality. I upload it to image to image, and then I replace the prompt with what I want to appear there. 
I forgot to remove the centaur from the prompt, but since the denoise value is small, I still got away with it. And in a few generations, I get better plants. Now, I place it on top of the old one and mask the content, and when I am ready, I drag it on top of the big original image. So this is the final image. As you can see, it has nice details and is something that AI could not do um, on its own because it wasn't trained on a lot of centaur images um, to be able to recognize it. Now you can animate it if you want. I found a nice program called DP Animation Maker. The interface of it is kind of old, but uh, it has all kinds of cool tools that let you animate a photo. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like so I know that it helped you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.